Hi, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa. It's March 6, 2015. And uh, in this video, I'll uh, be giving an overall uh, climate system uh, update. So what I have here on the uh, screen in front of us is uh, an image of from Earth Null School. So it's showing the air at the surface, the um, mean sea level pressure. And uh, what you can see here is a couple interesting things. These areas here are low pressure, so 984 hexapascal, uh, nine, just under a thousand. And over here, it's rather interesting. It's uh, 944, which is extremely low. So we have a low pressure area here. We have a cyclone here with the winds uh, circling here now. Um, and then there's uh, high pressure areas uh, over, over here. Um, so California, you know, over California. Um, and this is sort of the pattern that we've been seeing. Um, surface pressure is nominally about 10, 15 uh, hexapascals, one hexapascals, one millibar. But we have a cyclone here. We have this low pressure area, which is normally centered more over the Arctic, but it's shifted off here. And uh, the jet streams, which I'll show you in a minute, are extremely fractured and wavy. And we've got strong ridges here leading to high temperatures and a very strong trough here leading, leading to uh, you know, this very cold winter, anomalously cold winter just over eastern uh, North America. So this, this very strong storm, you can see what it's doing to the uh, ocean. So these are ocean wave heights. So we've got typical waves in this region of about you know, 10, 11 meters, um, up to 11 meters or so. Um, it's also reasonably wavy, you know, typically off the ice, which is here, is about three meters, something like that on both sides. Uh, but this is the, uh, one of the waviest parts of the planet right now, um, and it's due to this um, uh, persistent low pressure area. Um, so if I go back to air and I look at temperature, um, this is the uh, temperature pattern um that we can see over north america so you can see you can see that the lows you know we can go far south down into uh you know mexico you know and it's uh below zero you know it's, or just above zero right and then we can go way up so that this is at a latitude you know 30 degrees north and then we can go north to uh you know very high latitude 63 degrees and be above zero right up here you know 75 degrees and it's above zero so we get these so when the jet streams get fractured that nice division between cold air in the north and warmer air in the south is completely broken we get excursions of very cold air very far south excursions of warm air very far north and uh you can see um Let's have a look at the ocean, what's going on. We looked at the waves, the currents are coming here. So the Gulf Stream um, is moving across here. And if we look at the sea surface temperature, you can see the distribution of the temperature here. Um, so this area is actually quite, you know, 20 plus degrees. You know, there's actually warm air, go warm water going far up into the Arctic. So look at this warm water here, um, you know, off Scandinavia, you know, six degrees Celsius, very warm up into there. If we look at the uh, sea surface temperature anomaly, um, then you can see, you know, where it's really warm up here. You can see off the, where the Gulf Stream is, uh, seven degrees, you know, and this, there's this pool of warm water off, um, the uh, west coast of North America, you know, is is a persistent thing that we've seen for for years. Actually, um, just today it was announced that the we're officially we've officially started an El Nino, so the temperatures, uh, you know, in the Pacific are reaching this pattern. So we've had over five months of uh, 
um, sorry, we had over five periods where each period is three months, and I think it's like the, the ocean temperature is warmer than about half a degree Celsius. You know, so there's a region here, um, Nino 3.4 or something, something like that, where um, the temperature is above a certain value, 0.5, for a certain period of time. So it's classified officially as an El Nino. Now, normally El Ninos start, you know, in the summer. Um, you know, this is very unusual. It's been hovering just below that. In fact, the probability of an El Nino happening last year was 80 or 90 percent for lots of the year and it never arose and it, I think part of the reason is because of this warm pool up here that the, the system's behaving um, differently. Um, now if you look over here this is really interesting the the extremely warm temperature anomalies here you know if you zoom in on this region um, let it update. You can see parts here, you know, 10, 11 degrees warmer than normal. Now, until recently, this was a little bit further closer to the coast. So when we had these nor'easterly winds blowing from the northeast, they would blow over this really anomalously warm water, pick up all the moisture and dump it on the east coast. So places like Boston are setting, uh, I think it's an inch, you know, less than an inch away from setting an alternate uh, time record. Um, you know, we're talking about eight and a half, nine and a half, ten feet of snow um, in you know major cities that aren't used to it. So that when when all it's ta all is tallied from the the cost, the economic cost of the the snow, you know, up in the east coast, it's going to be uh, enormous. Probably you know much greater than tens of billions of dollars. So it'll go down as one of the record most um, in terms of cost, economic costs. Um, so, so this is um, the other interesting thing is is that um, uh, a report came out uh, in the last several weeks talking about 2009, 2010. Now, what happened in that year is the water off the eastern coast of the U.S. was up to five inches, actually 128 millimeters. Um, the sea level was 128 millimeters higher than expected, higher than normal. So five inches higher than normal, and that lasted uh, pretty much two years. So, um, you know, what caused that? I mean, the only thing that could cause that really is a redistribution of the ocean currents. Um, one of the reasons the water is so warm off here is because the Gulf Stream has been running further over the continental shelves, bringing that warm water there. Um, so the Gulf Stream has been Trent has been not bending over as much. Um, so you know a slowing Gulf Stream would tend to do that. Now in 2009-2010, um, I have this uh, data showing 2004 to 2011 the AMOC um, measurements in spur drops at 26.5 degrees north uh, latitude. So it's uh, measurements of the flow rate of the Gulf Stream basically. And look at this big drop here. And look at this anomaly here. This is a zero level. So, you know, if you believe this data, the Gulf Stream actually stopped and actually reversed a little bit at that latitude. So what what's happening here? What happened in this tremendous anomaly? Well, this was the time period when the uh, sea levels off the east coast were five inches higher than normal. So this that's the reason why clearly the Gulf Stream is, is ch the meridional overturning circulation is changing its pattern and it created this sea level rise when it's shut down almost reversing. So imagine what would happen if this shutdown was more prolonged than this. The uh, then the, the the sea level rise off the east coast would correspondingly be much larger. You know, five inches. You know, double it. You know, we're talking about a you know almost a foot. You know, so if this lasted for longer, that would pile up more and more water, causing uh, you know giving people a big surprise. Now, the interesting thing is is also you know in that 2009 2010 year. Um, the average ice thickness, the sea ice thickness in the Arctic uh, decreased. So you can see this decreasing rate here, but there was an abrupt drop 
in that 2009, 2010, 2011 time frame. So I would argue, you know, the term says the bottom dropped out here. So uh, um, I'm looking at the connections, but I suspect, I highly suspect that this drop here is also related to the declining um, Gulf Stream. Um, perhaps what happened is, is the water going northward on the Atlantic side was much less. So the, um, so that this could have increased the um, water imported into the Arctic from the Pacific. Um, more could have come in, um, more warm water could have come in um, and melting the sea ice from below, or you know, it could have been a combination of the meteorology from above and the seawater uh, from below. Um, so uh, um, I'll end uh, this video um, now. So, so I just, the key points are the whole climate system is changing rapidly. You know, I'm saying it's abrupt change. Uh, we're getting redistribution of ocean currents, we're getting, you know, rapidly declining sea ice thickness, in fact, a, an abrupt drop. Um, and at the same time period, we had a, a very crazy uh, sea level rise of five inches off the east coast. So these are all part of a big picture. Um, so I'll call this part one, and uh, I'll uh, continue uh, with the second part.